All you Americans who've been following the Islamization of Europe from afar with horrified incredulity, if any of you are still nursing the cosy illusion that it could never happen in your country, it's time to wake up and rub those sleepy eyes because the moment of truth has arrived. In case you haven't heard, there's a plan afoot to build a 13-story Islamic center and mosque a few yards from Ground Zero in New York. A plan that's been enthusiastically welcomed by politicians and civic leaders eager to show how tolerant they are at other people's expense. Is it possible to be astonished but not surprised? Apparently it's not enough that nearly 3,000 innocent people had to lose their lives in a hideous act of religious mass murder, but now their memory has to be insulted as well, and the religion that murdered them allowed to build a towering triumphalist mosque on the ground where they died. Is America losing its mind? It says a lot about the people behind this scheme that they had the bad taste even to propose building a mosque in such a place. But to describe it as they have as a tribute to the victims is beyond bad taste and shows a profound contempt for those who died. It would be hard to imagine a more provocative gesture short of standing on their graves and burning the American flag. Yet how typical of Islam, with its own hair-trigger sensitivity to the slightest imagined insult to do something so arrogant and so insensitive. It's going to cost a hundred million dollars to build this thing, but nobody's prepared to say where the money's coming from. We do know that the Saudis fund a lot of mosque building in the West when they're not busy trying to stamp out free speech at the United Nations or telling Fox News what to broadcast, so I guess we'll all be paying for it every time we start the car. You know, it seems to me a much more appropriate place for a mosque in New York would be the United Nations building itself because that organization has become so Islamo-friendly in recent years that frankly I'm surprised it doesn't already have a minaret. You know, I'm not even American, but it makes me sick to my stomach to think that Islam is going to be allowed anywhere near ground zero. Because 9-11 could never have happened if not for Islam and its teachings and its doctrine of jihad and its false promise of an impossible afterlife, without which none of those gullible lunatics would have been persuaded to carry out such an insane act. And also because it wasn't just an attack on America, but on all of us in the civilized world. As were the bombings in London, in Madrid, in Bali, the shootings in Mumbai, and everywhere else that the religion of peace decides it doesn't like the way people do things. Any religion that endorses violence is incapable of delivering spiritual enlightenment. How obvious does that have to be? And it has no right even to call itself a religion. Without the shield of religion to hide behind, Islam would be banned in the civilized world as a political ideology of hate, and we have no obligation to make allowances for it any more than we do for Nazism. It's a bigger threat to our freedom than Nazism ever was. Yes, both are totalitarian and both divide the world unnecessarily into us and them, the pure and the impure, and both make no secret of their desire to exterminate the Jews. But we were all more or less on the same side against the Nazis, whereas the Islamo-Nazis have got plenty of friends among people in the West who ought to know better. American politicians now regularly make the kind of dimmy noises about diversity as an excuse for Islamization, the same kind of thing that we've become so depressingly familiar with in Europe. It's true that diversity has been good for America, it's been the making of that country, but American diversity has always been grounded in respect for the values, the individual liberties that make America what it is. Islam rejects those values and that's the difference and it's a very important difference. Islam despises what America is, it rejects everything America stands for, including freedom and diversity, and any Muslim who denies that is a liar. The organization behind this scheme is called the Cordoba Initiative, and the building is to be called Cordoba House. And this is because Cordoba, or Cordoba, is the city in southern Spain where Muslims built their first great mosque at the start of, and as a symbol of, their conquest of Spain. The Ground Zero Mosque is intended to serve the same purpose in America. Building mosques on conquered sacred ground is standard practice. It's what Islam has always done to assert its supremacy, and that is what's happening here. And of course they know how insulting it is, how offensive it is. Are you kidding? Why do you think they chose a site as close as possible to Ground Zero? Or do you think that that was just an accident? And they also know that once it's built, it'll be there forever, as a permanent affront to all Americans, gloating in triumph 
and a major bridgehead in the ongoing stealth jihad. That's how the Muslim world will see it, and that's how they'll be encouraged to see it. And to be fair to them, that's exactly what it will be, confirming what they've always suspected, that America is a soft country, a decadent country, crippled by political correctness, confused and guilt-ridden, with no backbone and no pride. They plan to open it next year, on September the 11th, the 10th anniversary of the atrocity. Is that tasteless enough for you? I'm surprised they haven't organised a 757 fly-past. But you know, it doesn't have to be this way. Here in London, we had a similar situation just recently, where they wanted to build a gigantic mosque to overshadow the Olympic Games. Public opinion put a stop to that, and public opinion can put a stop to this disgraceful plan as well. And it can tell this group, and the politicians who support them, that enough is enough and that this is one insult too far, and that America is a big country, and there's plenty of room for them to build their offensive mosque, if they have to, somewhere else. Somewhere perhaps more appropriate to the spirit of their religion, like the Arizona desert, or Death Valley. Peace, and God bless the Kuffar.